Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about capillary electrophoresis. Now this is completely different type of electrophoresis compared with the gel type of electrophoresis because in gel electrophoresis, we know that gel creates a kind of polymer network. So let me take a color here. And gel cre creates a polymer network. A polymer mesh like network which contains pores and the material like DNA or protein they migrates through these pores right and as the pore size is different in different regions this pore size is the determinant for the movement and also the movement is determined by the charge or the electric field that is applied right but in case of capillary electrophoresis uh, we separate different um, chemical molecules it could be biochemical molecules or other chemical molecules. So those chemical molecules will be separated based on their charge to mass, mass ratio. When I mean charge and their mass, uh, both things are kind of a uh, factor in this case will be seen. So charge to mass ratio. Separation based on charge mass ratio. And this power point that we are going to uh, see, it is designed by Kevin Ol Olsen. Uh, for the chemistry and biochemistry for 2003. So it's completely developed by Kevin Olson and uh, This is a huge help for me as well as all of you who are understanding with his PowerPoint here. So I'm I'm not the copyright owner here so So let's talk about this whole process the process of capillary electrophoresis is very easy Capillary means very thin tube. It's a very very thin though. I'm, I can't draw very thin it's, it's the thinnest I can draw so this is kind of capillary. In capillary, you know that capillary process means it's a very thin tube if you just dip it into the water or any other uh, solution out there. The solution itself rise up there. So it's kind of structure like let's say uh, it filled with water and you somehow uh, put those capillary tube in there. And if you place this capillary tube here, it, you can see that uh, this, this whatever solution uh, that, that is placed here will start to rise in the, in the upper region like that. So that's what is called the capillary action. Now this capillary thing is used in this case, capillary is very thin tube and this thin tube uh, in this case that we use is a flexible tube made up with a separate uh, kind of polymer and we use this tube. And to transfer all those components that are present there, let's say mixture of components that we have and we inject those mixture of components somewhere and those injection injected component mixture will be separated based on their again the electric field. But in this case the electric field that we apply is huge. Let's say here 10, I mean 1000 volt per centimeter. This is a huge electric field compared with the uh, gel electrophoresis and a very tiny electric field is enough but in this case huge electric voltage is required and it's required to transfer it because of uh, the interaction that will be present between the wall of the capillary and the sample itself. So we use it to separate things. Let's say here this is the anode and cathode again the same things they're added but this is the capillary let's say the capillary is present by connecting anode and cathode together. Now here the idea is let's say we have a positively charged chemical factor out there right and this positively charged factor okay so as you see this is a anode or positively charged let's say the protein that is positively charged out there so it's a protein or not a protein let's say it's a chemical uh, molecule positively charged out there now that molecule will migrate from the positive towards the negative charged uh, region because obviously it will be attracted towards negative charged region and that it will move through this capillary and as it is moving through capillary, this positively charged chemical will also have an interaction with the wall of that capillary because the wall of capillary is produced in such a way and we are going to see that. So, so this movement of this molecule through this capillary uh, by two interaction, one is that this molecule has, let's say if I draw it, let's say it's a cross section of that capillary and that capillary has a particular charge, charged molecule added. Uh, in the inner surface of that capillary, let's say that is negatively charged and the chemical that we want for the movement is positively charged. So the chemical is interacting with the negatively charged inner surface of the capillary as well as it is, it, it is migrating towards the negatively charged cathode. That is the idea and this in this case of this interactions, two interactions that we see, 
the movement towards the negative charge as well as attachment towards the negative charge in the inner surface combined together they form what we call the chemi osmotic force out there or electro osmotic force or eof usually not chemi it's in this case electro osmotic force and this electro osmotic force is very very important and that's why the most advantageous part about this capillary electrophoresis because you know in case of hplc or gas chromatography is usually the process like a chromatography thing more used in uh, chemistry purposes than biological purpose gas chromatography hplc and all these things can be used mass spectrometry can also be attached for all this case but the problem with hplc and gas chromatography is that the separation of the liquid phase from the solid phase separation of the running phase from the stagnant phase but in this case there is no point of doing this because in this case it can easily be transferred uh, from uh, one place to another place without being this phase separation uh, to do so that's the important thing here so this electrosmotic uh, force is a very vital thing and that is developed due to these two interactions that i've told you now here the velocity of the movement i mean the velocity for that uh, molecule to migrate depends on the field strength and the electrophoretic mobility that's what i've talked about electrophoretic mobility or electrosmotic force whatever you say so here it is the electrophoretic mobility that is denoted with this u EP electrophoretic mobility and that is determined by three different factors one is the Z that is the net charge of the analyte in this case analyte or whatever thing we, we check the chemical molecule the net charge in capital Z and also uh, the N that is the viscosity of the medium that is obviously playing a vital role there because as we're talking about the capillary thing definitely it is something to do with the viscosity and obviously uh, the stokes radius the stokes radius is a thing technical term i'm not going to explain but stokes radius is related with the mass of that analyte as the higher the mass the stokes radius will be higher for that particular analyte so as you can see it here the variables that are governing the electrophoretic mobility here charge net charge that is the capital z that's the playing of most vital role if it is a higher charge the mobility will be very fast the radius means the Stokes radius that means obviously it depends on uh, the molecular mass of that sample or analyte and the mobility that is depending upon the viscosity a little bit so these are the three things electroosmotic flow uof we've told you about this the flow is a phenomenon resulting when a solution is contained in a capillary with fixed charge along its wall that i've told you two interaction one is the interaction with wall of that capillary second thing is the directionality depending upon the opposite charge that is from positive towards negative if the analyte is positive so let's say this is thing analyte is positive it will migrate towards that if the analyte is negative it will migrate towards this so from where does this osmo i mean electrosmotic flow come from simply this is the anode this is the cathode capillary is placed and i forgot to tell how we detect the, the presence of these analytes at the end. At the end, we have a detector. The detector that is present at the end of the detection scheme here. And the detector can be UV detector or any, any other means of detector. So here we apply the 1000 volts per centimeter thing here and the, the analytes start to migrate. As the analyte is positively charged, try to migrate towards this cathode over there. So as you see it here, the ideal thing about electroosmotic force is that this is the cross section of the capillary and if you see the capillary is made in such a way it is filled with this negatively charged molecules in the inner surface region the inner region of uh, the inner wall of that capillary and this interior wall of the capillary as it contains uh, it, this, these are ionized charge and this is made up with silanol group and actually the whole capillary is made up with silanol group making it with silanol group added advantage is that it makes be it makes this uh, capillary more flexible in nature so and the silanol group is fused with silica to give it a kind of rigid but flexible structure it covers all those negatively charged ionized silanol groups on the interior wall so once it is present there and once we have those positively charged uh, molecules present there let's say these are the positively charged analytes that are present and they are interacting with the negatively charged wall uh, here that is the first thing of development of electrosmotic flow alongside it will move towards the negative end 
So this is the idea I have told you. This is the positive end. This migrates. This this positively charged analyte will migrate towards the negative end. Now imagine constructing this hole as a capillary like this. It will migrate uh, like like this. Okay. So this is the negative end. Now in this case, pH plays a very vital role as well as silanol population. Uh, it depends. I mean, these are the things. This pH silanol population determines the electrosmotic flow out there. Because at the very low pH, if you look, not many silanols are ionized. Because for the ionization of silanol, it's importance of a pH. So it's a low pH. Uh, not many silanols are ionized. In that case, the EOF is slow. So the movement will be slower. As the pH start to increase, those silanols will start to ionize more. So the interaction between the positively charged analyte and the silanol will be more. And the EOF will start to speed up steadily and then finally when it reaches a highest pH out there then all of those uh, number of ionized site are reached in the silanol and the EOF speed reaches the maximum right so that's how we know about it and if you look at here the same thing I'm explaining here the EOF and the movement the actual movement if the analytes with the net positive charge will move faster than EOF right so if an analyte is an, having a net positive charge, right, it will move faster. If the analyte with no net charge is present, it's a kind of neutral analyte is present. In that case, it will move at the same time with EOF, with the, with the velocity of EOF. And if the analyte has a more negative charge, it will migrate slower compared with the EOF, right? Because if it's a kind of negative charge, it is going towards negative end. It will move very slowly but if it's having a net positive charge more than in that case it will move towards the negative end very very fast if it's a, have a kind of neutral charge it's kind of moving with the uf so you will take it as its normal velocity now the separation efficiency and the diffusion coefficient these are the two important things that matters and what thing is also matters here is the size of the sample or analyte. If it's very small, then in that case, doing capillary electrophoresis is not good enough, right? Because uh, normally for the smaller molecules, what happens? Smaller molecules have less diffusion coefficient. I'm not going to talk about details about diffusion coefficient, but smaller molecules have less diffusion coefficient. So as a result, in that case, they will have a separation efficiency less. So if you look at here, the separation efficiency dramatically falls as the diffusion coefficient gets down. So for the very tiny molecules, it will fall very fast and the separation won't be very easy for those molecules. And you won't get a fine kind of resolution. You'll get a kind of resolution similar to HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography, uh, not more than that. So it's not a good idea to use that because we are using capillary electrophoresis to exclude out all the problems that we associate with HPLC or GC. That's why we are using it because these are better in resolution, resolution compared with the HPLC thing. And so what we do and how we do that? So we have a capillary uh, coming in. Let's say we have uh, this capillary thing. We have a detector at the end. This is the detector and we have a region for injecting that analyte. This is the injection point. So this is the start of say plus end, minus end. This is the capillary. This is a kind of schematic presentation. So what we know about here is that there are two different methods for injecting our desired analytic mixture. One is the pressure differential. That's applying a pressure across the capillary while it's dipping into the sample solution. That is one thing. Second thing is that electrokinetic injection by applying voltage and allowing ions to migrate to the capillary. So two things, one is applying a pressure, second is applying a voltage. So either we can apply the pressure there or we can apply a voltage there. Now, if we want to apply the voltage, definitely the injection site should be slightly upfront from the anode over there, right? Because obviously, the, if the molecules are placed, yeah, molecules should be placed from this area. So voltage should start before that, not after that, okay? And if you are adding uh, the pressure, it can work in any place. But for using pressure to inject all those analyte mixture into the capillary, we definitely need a separate uh, pressure room out there. So usually what we do is start to create kind of bubble-like structures at the end 
uh, as well as at the front if we are using pressure for this purpose. At the end where the detector detects uh, the presence of this analytes, we have a kind of bubble like structure. So it's a kind of uh, artificially designed structure that so that the detector can detect this ultimate region very well because we no longer require capillary regions at the end where we are detecting things. Now the last thing is the advantages of capillary electrophoresis is that the number of theoretical plates is typically the hundreds of thousands. There is no mass transfer between the mobile and stationary phase. That's the most important point. What is the, what is the disadvantage of HPLC is now the advantage of capillary electrophoresis because in HPLC or GC what we need to do there is a mass transfer between mobile and stationary phase and they, that takes some time as well as uh, some other problems during the separation and then the running of all this process but that thing is never happening in case of capillary electrophoresis so in case of capillary electrophoresis the flow is kind of constant that is called as a laminar flow right and smooth over time so that's the advantages part of that and also altering column conditions allow focusing or concentration of the sample these are binary but the major thing is there is no mass transfer between the mobile and stationary phase and that's the most important part of all so these are the advantages of capillary electrophoresis and that's how we use capillary electrophoresis so that's it for the video i hope that's helpful if you like the video hit the like button please subscribe to get more videos like that as well as uh, share this video with your friends in different social networks thank you